Hello everybody and welcome back to the United Stand. It is the derby for the cup final. Manchester United take on Manchester City at Wembley for the second year in a row and we're hoping for a very different outcome. And this is the FA Cup fan preview show with myself, Ricky, Mods and our special guest that I know you all absolutely love it, <laughs> uh, Luke. So, Luke, thank you for braving the lion's den no, again. Yeah, it's all right. Not much of a den, is it, at this, at this point? But <laughs> it's good to, good to be here. Good to be here. You're already starting a <laughs> match. Ricky? Yes, love. How are you feeling going into the FA Cup final? What is? Tomorrow. <laughs> tomorrow, the FA Cup final yeah. happens. Are you, is there any confidence you've got in the team? He's just started to play with three midfield players. Like when Bruno plays in midfield, he gets too far forward. And he's not done that. He's only done that once before these last three games. And that was at Liverpool. We got a point at Liverpool when Liverpool were well in the championship race at the time. We have got slightly more chance. But whatever chance we had might have only been, I don't know, say a 5% chance. And now it might be an 8% chance. So it's still not a big chance. But we might just have a little bit more chance than we would have had. Uh, well, then we would have had if Bruno wouldn't have got injured, to be honest, because if Bruno didn't get injured, he wouldn't have fallen on this midfield three. Do you think, because I think he, he played a false nine earlier on in the season at the Etihad, so he has thought about it before. I mean, Maud, how confident are you going into this game? Uh, <clears throat> I said I'm going to be shameless today, so I'm actually very confident. I think <laughs> He can't help it. Uh, no, I think, first of all, I think they're still on abuse from, from earlier this week, because, you know, obviously, congratulations, you won the league. <laughs> obviously, it came you out of cost. You weren't planning to congratulate them, actually. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, I treat you. I mean, it came out of cost 115 times, but it's, it's, uh, it's nothing to, to bring up now. But, yeah, I think... I mean, we spoke about it before, before we started recording. Now, there's definitely a chance. At the end of the day, it's a cup game. Everyone thought Leverkusen were going to beat Atlanta the other day and they got beat 3-0. So, um, and then it's football and you never know what's going to happen. So, we've definitely got a chance. Luke, how are you feeling? You're usually very confident. Yeah. Well, I'd say I'm confident as you can be, but it's a cup game and it's a one-off game. And I know league games are obviously one game in themselves, but I just think with a cup game, anything can happen. It's one decision, one bad mistake, whatever. And as you know about early goals as well uh, from last year, if that happened to us, then I think we'd be in a bit of trouble. So I, I'm pretty confident, but not, not too confident, not quite as confident as I am for like, the league games and that. Well, you never know, someone could get a red card as well. Yeah, you exactly. You never know, things can happen early doors. I'm confident. Yeah. Do you know what? I've decided, I've, I've, been, I've been, I keep saying, oh, we've got no chance, we've got no chance. And I thought, do you know what? I'm not, I'm not putting this negative energy out there yeah, any longer. I, out there. <laughs> I am going to support the team, I'm going to back the team. It's the last game of the season. You know, we've not got much more torture to go through. <laughs> and it is an FA Cup final and anything can happen on the day. Wembley, I don't want a repeat of last year. You know, the thing is for, 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 for City, is what I'll say, is they've just won the league. And OK, yeah, they are professional. They've come off the back of a treble, sadly. And, you know, they can... They are just professional and they get themselves up for every single game. But the, Manchester United, like, we're not in Europe currently. A lot of players' like wages percentages are resting on this. And I know that's like not really one you could put out there, but it's the futures at the club. Like, Eric Ten Hag might not even be manager. We don't know yet. Like, what's their future going to be under the new manager? I mean, I do think the players have a lot to fight for, for the fans as well. And like you said, like, City have been celebrating win winning the league. I've seen Jack really stumbling out of yeah. God knows where, you know, on, on, yeah. on the boot. So that kind of fetch, it's only marginal. It's only marginal, but I'm going to try and use that to my advantage. Luke, you look... I, do, I, I, do, I think, obviously, that the City players have been on the booze, whatever, but I don't th even though it is a mid-table team they're playing, they'll still, oh. be able to, they'll still be able to motivate themselves, I think, to, to win the game. Do you so. know what? I, hope, I really hope City go in there confident as anything. I yeah. hope they underestimate us. I hope they think, oh, that's a mid-table team, because that gives us the upper hand. You know what it is? I think it's just time that City's got humbling, and I feel like it's the perfect time for Man United to be that team, to humble them. I mean, Arsenal couldn't do it. No shot there, because it's Arsenal. They're used to bottling stuff, but I think United, if, if it comes to... If it's going to come down to one team to actually do it to City, it's going to be United. So The one thing I would say, Luke, is earlier on in the FA Cup, Manchester United had that brilliant game against Liverpool where we won 4-3. Yeah. I know Liverpool you know, did fall away towards the end of the season. After that game, yeah. really, actually. It actually was that game, yeah. But they are a good side under Jurgen Klopp. I know, for me, like if you ask me in this final, do I want to be playing Liverpool or City? I'd say Liverpool every day of the week. I think we have more of a chance against them, just our playing styles. But Manchester United have turned up in big games like that. Like, does that worry you? Well, that's what cup football does. Like we, I remember watching that game and it was just mad. It was just a mad game, end to end. That last minute goal, I think it was, it was in an extra time. That uh, yeah. Ahmad yeah. goal. Yeah. I think it's just cup football for you. It can just go mental. No teams thinking about a draw in these kind of games as well, which definitely has a, an interesting dynamic f 
for the game. So, yeah, I think in a normal game, United might think, you know, what a point might not be awful uh, secretly. But in this game, that doesn't exist, so they've got to just go for it. And that, that'll that create probably quite a good game, I'd, I'd hope, anyway. But, in yeah. terms of... I mean, I hope it's a good game. I hope we, I, we were speaking before the show, Martin. We were saying, you know, if we're still in the game around the 60th, 70th minute, and by still in the game, that's even 1-0 down because you're still in the game at that you, point. You've got to survive 13 seconds before you get to 60 <laughs> minutes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, where have I heard that one before? <laughs> um, but, no, in, in terms of what I was saying, like, staying in the game and stuff, like, do you think Man United, like, at any point will be thinking, obviously, you want to win the game, and you want to win it within 90 minutes, but do you think it could get to a point where, you know, they're thinking, we can take this stretch of time, we can take it to penalties? We saw what Real Madrid did to City, and Real Madrid are different to United, yeah. don't get me wrong, but I, I'm not joking, Real Madrid won that game because they, 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 they took it to penalties. I could not see them winning it within within the time that was, that was there, and... You know, City were battering them from pillar to post. We even brought Doku on yeah. to go against um, Carvajal. And it, it was, you know, it was, they were on rocky territory of Real Madrid, but they took it to extra time, they took it to penalties. And we've seen City be exploited on penalties before. Do you think that'll be in the back of the minds of the United players as well? Um, the thing is that I... Because we've had a good record on penalties recently. I really yeah. would not fancy us on penalties. Yeah, I, I, I would take so. penalties, but I would never actually yeah. say we should go for it because yeah. you cannot... I mean, what, what year was it where... I think it was against Real Madrid again, where like there was like last five minutes or something like that, yeah. and Rodrigo scored like two goals. Yeah. You probably want that to go penalties as well. Yeah, well, um, yeah. You know what I'm saying? At Rodrigo that point, scored, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, depends on like how the game's going though. Who's got the upper hand? Yeah. That's what I mean. So if you you say you want it to go penalties, you're basically asking for it to just be like up in it. Yeah. I'm not gonna lie, I would take penalties in a heartbeat right now. I think a pen penalties <laughs> is like a 60-40 United in United's favour. I think personally. Why would you say that? We've got a terrible record on penalties recently. Uh, we lost to Community Shield, lost to Real Madrid on penalties, and I think. Historically, the last 10 years, we've not had any particularly good penalty takers. Haaland, to be fair, has been banging them in this season. But before that, terrible, terrible on penalties. So I really don't, I would not back us on penalties at all. Of course, you're not going to have Edison there either to take one for Then you. again, yeah, that's true. But we would have probably a slightly better penalty saver in Ortega in goal. So that is something, but... Yeah, Edison's penalty, that was that was special, that one. Yeah. Real Madrid might have took them to penalties, but they've yeah. got Camavinga, Tony Cruz, <laughs> Modric, yeah. Bellingham, and, and so I, on and so we're, on. You know, we're, not, we're, not, yeah. we're nowhere near Ricky, Real Madrid. Ricky, Ricky we've, got, we've, got, we've got Johnny Evans and Scott McTominay, what are you on about? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, what I was going to say, I think with, with Real Madrid, the reason why they actually won that game was, um, yeah, obviously they took it to penalties, but... A lot of, throughout the game, the reason why they actually stayed in it was just individual moments of brilliance. Like even Rudiger, even though he scored the winner penalty, but there were times during the game where they only survived because of him. Yeah. It was like a last-minute crucial yeah, challenge yeah, yeah. or um, even like, um, the goals that they scored, like, I know Vinny scored a goal. I don't, I don't know, you didn't even play that well, that, that, um, no, the, yeah. those, two, those two legs. But I thought he did, you know. I, think I, thought he got, I thought he got underrated on that, but anyway. <sighs> anyway, yeah. but I think it's just the fact that they have so much individual talent, that's what kept them in, in that, that whole... Um, in that the, the two games, whereas I think with United, we need to try and find that individual talent somewhere, whether it is a Johnny Evans making a crucial talent challenge or <laughs> Bruno scoring a crazy goal, whatever in it. We need those plates to come up, and that's the only way we're going to, in my opinion, that's the only way we're going to actually be able to be City. Well, I want to talk about individual players, and I want you to speak <coughs> about we've just been announced that Bruno Fernandes has won Player of the Year for Manchester United, as voted for by the fans. We'll have to see what players' players are. I know Ricky will be have some comments on that, but I wanted to ask Luke in terms of you from an outside perspective. Yeah. Do you think that award is deservedly <sighs> gone to Bruno? Like, who do you think are Man United's like best players that we should be building around? Uh, yeah, I do think I do think Bruno Fernandez is your best player, but then I think he can also on at times be a worse player. I think back to that game you had at Anfield last season. I thought it was an embarrassment the way he was just whining. I mean, you're seven, seven, seven nil down and he's there. Oh, you have to bring that one no, up. Just, you find any way possible. No, he, he's there just moaning and whining. I think when you're losing a game, he, he just acts like a kid. He's running around, stropping around. And I think he can be a leader on the pitch and he can score goals, make goals, and he's a good player. But I think he can really tax your team sometimes. But I would say he's your best player, yeah, Bruno. Is there anyone else that you think like stands out for Manchester United? Because obviously Man United fans are looking for an overhaul. Yeah. They're looking for us to can do a complete rebuild. Is there anyone that kind of stands out there for you as players that, oh, you know what, like they're a bit of all right, Man I, United should move forward I, with them? I just think there's way too much attitude in your team. I think you look at a team like City and there's not many players you look at him and go, he needs to sort his attitude out. I think just a, I'm not going to go through and list a load of United players, but I'll say Anthony is one. I think if you look at him, 
just the way he conducts himself on the pitch. You beat Coventry on penalties and he's there giving it large at the end. Harry Maguire, on the other hand, is going shaking hands with him. So it's like, just some of the United players just really need to just sort out the mentality, I think. I think, um, I think mentality is a big thing. Yeah. I think, I think we, we, could all, we could all agree with that, to be <coughs> honest with you. And I, 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 I do think it's, it's like once you go past Bruno Fernandes, like there's a couple that stick out to us because we watch every week, but it's really like tough to find players that have the talent and the mentality because you need yeah. both. You need both to play think, at, at the top level. I think level. it's just a to pretty toxic culture at United from a player's perspective. You've just got a lot of players that don't seem to want to be a team, I think, sometimes. And that's just a bit, a bit weird for United fans, I'm, I'm guessing. I don't, don't know how you feel about that. In terms of a City fan, and then Aubrey Mars and Ricky, and like, there's talk that Bruno Fernandes will start as false nine with kind of Scott McTominay the way that we did against New... Not Newcastle, against Brighton on the last game of the season. I mean... Rasmus Hoyland, like, would you would you be if if you're a City fan, are you thinking I want Rasmus Hoyland to start, or I, I think that false nine we can get it? Like, what are you thinking on that? I I think if I could pick for Hoyland to play or not play, I'd say I'd rather him not play because he he can be quite explosive at times. He can finish the ball, but I think I don't, Mick Tominay, I don't I don't rate him that highly at all. I think I think he has he has scored some big goals for this season. He's had a big impact. And I think he's performed pretty well, but I just against City, I really don't, I, I don't fancy him at all. I wouldn't. I mean, this could come back to bite me, I suppose. <laughs> but I wouldn't if he's like running around up front or whatever. I just don't, I don't see it. I don't. Ricky, do you want to come back on that? No, I don't think he's. Um, I think he's right when he says if he's running around up front was, yeah. his, was the exact phrase. <laughs> but I prefer Matt Tomlin playing in midfield, and I think we do need him in midfield. Do you, would, do you think that, because I've spoken earlier saying that I think Eric Ten Hag will start, Bruno is a false nine and, and Hoyland will miss out. Do you, think, do you see Ten Hag going that way? I think he will, yeah. I think it'll be pretty similar, except uh, I think Bruno and Matt Tomlin will both start, but I do think Matt Tomlin will be a little bit deeper in this game than he was against Brighton. Yeah, I agree with that. And I, and I think that's the way it'll go as well. But like I said, Maud, stay in the game. Yeah. Hoyland mm -hmm. off the bench could be really, really crucial. But for that to pay off... You've got to stay in the game. Stop smiling. Stop smiling. <laughs> Moss, yeah. does Rashford start? Uh, does Rashford start? Um, no, probably not. Um, but again, it does. I'm, I'm kind of mixed on this because no, he didn't deserve to start. That's the bottom line. He doesn't deserve to start. He's not done anything this season for me. He's not even going to England. So why is he starting for, for, for United? Like, so <clears throat> I don't think, like I said, there's no reason for him to start over the attack the um, wingers that we have already, as in Garnacho and Ahmad. Um, but like I said before, we're going to have to win off individual brilliance. We're going to have to. And the game that played against City, yeah, we scored the first he, goal. Exactly, I was going to say, and, and he got that, one goal this season and that was Rashford. That was, an early, well, that was pretty early yeah, in the game as yeah. well. So, I mean, it's the same thing. It was an absolute scream. Yeah. It was an absolute scream. Garnacho not scoring that. Is he? Garnacho literally just gone the goal of the season, Rod. No. <laughs> yeah, he did. But, that, but I mean, okay, in terms of like the chance of it happening again, he's not going to score that kind of goal again. It's like a once in a lifetime kind of goal. Yeah, I've seen him a great try goal. It. Am I right in saying I've seen him try yeah, over red kick times. times? He's like, times. like a couple more times. He's not I've seen it. Maybe like one, maybe like one yeah. of the time. But it is, it is one of them one in a million goals. Like yeah. He might score it, what, maybe 29 or something. But yeah. the goal that Rashford scored, it's not impossible to say Rashford can't score a goal like that again. He scored the same goal against Arsenal pretty much. Um, when was that either last season or this season? No, it was this season. Was it this on? season? Yeah, yeah where you, you, I think he knocked it past party and then just, just smacked it from outside smacked the box. It. So it is possible that Rashford could produce something like that again in this kind of game, and we're going to need that at the end of the day. So that's the other side of, of the story. I don't agree that you necessarily need to think that one of your players has got to come up with a spectacular goal, or even that one of your better players or most one of your most attacking players even. I mentioned this on the show last week. I watched uh, I watched Dortmund play against PSG. I sent an half score and then headed from a corner. Do you know what I mean? But they're more comp they're, you know, they're Dalot scored for us at the weekend. Uh, the, goal, the goal can come from anywhere. I don't think you should be thinking to yourself, here's a player who might score a spectacular goal, so we need to give him game time. I really don't. But a goal can come from anywhere. Those teams that, like, Dortmund... Like, that's a very well constructed team. They, uh, they yeah, play but at least Maguire very, scores headers from corners. There's no. The, I think there's as much chance if we are going to get a goal. I think there's just as much chance of Harry Maguire scoring a header from a corner than there is Marcus Rashford scoring a 30 yarder. No, there's absolutely I no do. way. I do. I, I reckon I just about back you there. I'd, I'd say the same. I don't think. I think what you're saying is. in time. Yeah, I suppose. I suppose how what many, we're saying how, is. So, sorry to cut in there. How many players score? 
fantastic goals regularly. Like you've mentioned two of Rashford's there this season. Two yeah. in a season. That's two against two pro- big teams. Yeah, but probably Foden, Maguire scored two headers. The only player, only player I can think of is Foden. Is Foden recently. Foden could that do That same regular, goal like, into uh, that top yeah, left, left corner every top. time. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. I mean, as you as a City fan again, I mean, what are your thoughts on, on Rashford this season? And what are your thoughts on... A lot of United fans are complaining that Rashford wasn't in the England squad and Jack Grealish yeah. has been put in there. I got absolutely <coughs> rinsed for saying I think Jack Grealish should be in there. But, I mean, what are your thoughts on Rashford for United in terms of facing City and, and that whole situation? Yeah, I, I think that last season he obviously got a lot of goals. It must have been 30 or more goals last season and this season has been terrible. I just... I watch him and there's that guy on Twitter that does that compilation every week of, of, of his fails and... I'll have a chuckle watching that, but I, I just don't think this season he's been up to it. And I think whether, again, that's mentality, he does a lot of talking off the pitch and he doesn't seem to sometimes back that up on the pitch. That's the main thing. do doesn't matter what you're saying off the pitch, as long as he's doing a job on the pitch, that's the first priority and he's not doing that. So I don't think this season, if you're the England manager, you should be picking him and taking him to a competition where you need the best, most informed players. And I can see why somebody like Jack Grealish should definitely been picked over him, Jared Bowen or someone like that. Because you've got to have the players that are in form. You don't want, you don't want some guy that's hanging off a legacy of years gone by. Grealish isn't yeah. really in form, though. Yeah. He, Gre- <clears throat> the thing is with Grealish, I think the games he's played this season, he, he has been... I, I've, I've personally rated him a lot. And I think for England, he's not had as many chances as he probably should have. I remember that uh, Euros, we got to the final, obviously. And the whole the whole tournament, all the England fans were saying, get him in the team, get him in the team. We want to see him play. And he was only getting on the bench. And now, I think he, he'll, I think he should be starting for England personally. If he's fit, I yeah. If he's fit, I think he should be starting. Do you know? Do you know? This is how like I rate Grealish like proper highly, and I do think he gets a lot of discredit from other fan bases because everyone nowadays just looks at goals and assists, goals and assists. But yeah. you actually watch him play. He influences exactly. you so well. Yeah. Like such an important part of a team that's been so so, so successful. But for me, as a United fan, when I'm looking at City's lineup on on Saturday, I'm hoping Grealish isn't in it yeah. because he always causes us problems. He wins free kicks, which we don't know how to deal with yeah. set pieces. We are terrible at on set pieces. I don't want that in and around the box. He just causes problems. Don't get me wrong, Jeremy Docker is also someone you know you don't want coming at you, and you've got <coughs> other wingers as well, like players that can play there, like Foden, Bernardo, and stuff like that. That every player that you have is you know you are fearful of. But Jack Grealish, for me, really is up there where I'm like, I don't want him on the pitch. He works hard defensively. He wins your fouls around the box. And that's how I would rate him. And I think in a major tournament as well, when you're looking to, you know, to, to, to win games, someone that can keep hold of the ball and win your fouls in important areas is, is important to have. But. Yeah, and no, I, I agree. My only thing with South... Oh, oh dear. <laughs> it's it's out. Um, my, my only thing with um, Southgate is I don't even think... It's a problem the fact that he's not Pitt Rashford in it because I think we had a conversation yeah. here as well. Um, you, you as well, um, here as Ricky, um, about whether Rashford should come to the Euros. And I remember saying that I don't think he should just because of the fact that the other players around him in that position have played a lot better than him. And it, in, if I was Southgate, I'm thinking, really and truly, your, your thought process should be based off the season that's just happened. Really and truly, that's what it should be. Mm. But my problem with Southgate is he doesn't do that and he contradicts himself a lot. So it's like if you want to, if you're going to contradict yourself and you're going to pick players like Carbon Phillips, even though he didn't play play like 45 minutes for City, or he's played like Maguire times where Maguire's not been playing for United, or he's played Pickford when Pickford's not been on form for Everton, or even Henderson at times where he's not played that amazing for Liverpool, then you've got to keep that same mentality for other players as well. Like for example, Sterling. Sterling's not played great for Chelsea, but he's been England's best player for the past like two tournaments. Why is he not? Why is he not being picked? Rashford. Play, Rashford's not played. I'm not saying he's played amazing for. for for England, but he's definitely putting good performances, more good performances than Grealish. So why is he not using that same mentality? No, he's he not has. putting more, more good he performances than Grealish. He was a top goal scorer in the, in the group stages in, at the last tournament. Marge, you're talking absolute. He was. <laughs> what, has, what has Grealish done in the England yeah, top? Can't, Rashford. Rashford can't hold a candle to Grealish in any way, shape, in, or in form. In an England top? No, he can't. In an England top? Yeah, he can't. What, what was Grealish's best England game? Look, I can't remember. Any specific game where I've gone to that game or watched the game and thought Grealish was fantastic or thought Rashford was fantastic, but I just know Grealish is a better player. I remember the Euros. I remember the Euros in England where, uh, in a really important game, like a quarter-final, yeah. maybe a semi-final, where Grealish was on the left, Luke Shaw was on the left, and the, and the combination is absolutely superb. Grealish holds the ball. I'm sure I'm sure the winning goal came from a, 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 a pass yeah. a pass yeah. from Grealish to Shaw, and he holds it so superbly, Grealish, and he plays it with the right weight and at the right time. Um, so he doesn't get the assist because he's the one who gets, he gets the pre-assist, if you like. 
Yeah. He's an absolutely class player. He passes it at the right time with the right weight on it and shows free into the box, squares it, and they get a goal. Yeah. That's just what. That's just one goal. Yeah, that's no, just no, one no, goal. But that's how he plays the game, Grealish. He's a quality, quality player, and Marcus Rashford isn't. I think I'm, I'm not even debating that Grealish isn't a great player. In fact, mm. in terms of just technical ability, I'm, mm. he's definitely better than Rashford. I'm not even trying to say that. Mm. But my whole point is the fact that. In an England top, which is what Southgate always talks about, in an England top, in an England top, Rashford has put in more good performances than Grealish. Marcus Rashford has been to four tournaments with England. How many has he started? How many has he played regular games? He's been to four tournaments with England. In those four tournaments, England have played 12 group games, 10 knockout games. That's 22 games. He's not started a single knockout game. He's started two group games out of 22. So how can he have been playing well? How can he have played well? Well, He played two games, but he's a top goal. Thing is as well. Thing is as well. We're now talking about a World Cup. There was fair enough. Rashford got a couple of goals in that (coughs) thing. Henderson was good in that tournament. He's not anywhere near getting in, I don't think, because he went off to wherever he went off, and now he's at Ajax. So, I think even if you did say you know Rashford was decent in the in the World Cup, I think Grealish got. And I don't. I don't think. I think it's a bit unfair to say it's Grealish or Rashford. I think it's probably a different player or Rashford. To yeah, yeah, pretty, yeah, 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 pretty much. Like, it, at the moment, you can't deny that some of the other wingers that have been picked are playing a lot better than him. So I just hope he uses it as motivation and tries to show show what, what they're missing on Saturday. Please turn up yeah. and, and play well because we know, like you said, he's got yeah. that bit of individual brilliance in his locker. I'm hoping he brings that on Saturday and I'm hoping we actually finally see some point in the season, a little bit of hunger, a little bit of bite from Marcus Rashford, because usually it just, it's like, yeah. it's like, it just, just, just doesn't feel like there's anything there, but I want to see, I want to see some fight, I want to see I'm some hoping aggression. completely the opposite. Hmm? I'm hoping completely the opposite. So you're hoping you'd... No, 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 listen, listen. What you're hoping for, I assume you're talking about him coming on late in the game, yeah. Right? yeah. But what you're hoping for is for us to be needing a goal late in the game. <laughs> I'm hoping we're hanging on to a lead late in the game and you won't be bringing Marcus Rashford on then. That's what I'm hoping for. I mean, <laughs> that, that's probably a lot less likely. But that's less that likely, happens, but that's, that's, what, what, that's what I'm hoping for. In terms of, in terms of Eric Ten Hag, it's his most, in my opinion, the most important game of his managerial career. I know Ajax in the Champions League was a big one for him, but a lot of people, you know, Ineos still apparently haven't made a decision on Eric Ten Hag yet. There's going to be a decision made after the cup final. Me personally, I don't think the result will matter in terms of whether they're going to get rid of him or not. I do think the manner in the defeat could play yeah, a big yeah. part into it. Mm. So, <coughs> Eric Ten Hag, I'll come to you, Luke. Yeah. I know you have that chant and everything like that and whatever, 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 whatever. But on a serious note, like as a City fan looking in, what are your thoughts on Eric Ten Hag? Do you think Man United should keep him? Um, and, and do you have any kind of, I don't know, compa- well, not compassion, but understanding of the things he's had to deal with off the pitch for United as well? Yeah, well, he, the thing is, he goes on a lot about these injuries you've had, which you have had injuries, but I don't see other managers. Like Eddie Howe's had a lot of injuries at Newcastle this season. I think... M- more than United and I, I just see him cracking on with it. I think he seems to get too caught up with these comments in, in the media and I, th- I think he's useless, I really do. I, I, I bet you hope we keep him. I, I do want you to keep him, yeah, of course I want you to keep him. I, I'm not surprised. I don't think you will, uh, but I think he's useless to be honest. Mm. I think, Why do you think sometimes that? he's just tactically inept. Um, I don't really know how he can, and I'm, I'm going to bring it up again, how he can concede 13 goals at Anfield and City last season. Fair enough, he's done well against Liverpool this season. He's clearly changed something there. But for that to even be a starting point, as soon as you go a few down, he should just be shutting up shop and accepting. And people would criticise and say, you know, you're 3-0 down or whatever, why you lock? You can't go and concede that many goals against two of your biggest rivals. I really don't know how that I agree with you. And and, and to do it a second time when it's already happened once is absolutely embarrassing because you need to understand, look, we don't want that to happen again. exactly. And in the manner, Mm -hmm. I personally think he should have gone after that 7-0 game because he he played us in the October, you've got to give him a bit of time. You, you, you put not, six pastels in about it, a month yeah, later. They put it seven should be a sackable offence. I don't, offense, I don't <laughs> agree because obviously, even though that was really, really poor, and I agree with the sense that it was, that was 
tactically inept and it, w it was poor from him. I do think, I, I'll be honest, the first one to say, I do think he underestimated the Premier League when he came in. I do think he's made a lot of mistakes, but should you just write someone off straight away or should you give them at least some time to rectify and see <sighs> see where he can get to? I don't I think, think a manager turns into a bad manager overnight. I think he's had his time then. He's come eighth. Do you know what he, he was linked to Man City before he came to United. It's your lowest ever finish in the Premier League. Eighth place. Mid, yeah, we're mid -table. Eighth place team. Mid table. Also, you have an eighth place team. Why are people surprised? But you've spent you spent team. way more than anyone else, team so you can't you can't be an eighth place team. And it's the an worst injury team. crisis we've ever had. Eighth though. Is I don't understand. Shocking. What I don't understand for the people that do defend Ten Hag and all these things that you know they keep you know putting these things out there. We're Man United. We've got to do better than that. Injuries or no injuries. How long the does that? The amount of money we've spent. <laughs> you can't, you can't, and I don't understand can't. what. <clears throat> what is there to see to make you think? Do you understand what yeah. I mean? I could, there's like he's just spoken about. There's loads of things we can bring up why he should be sacked. I can't see anything mm. to argue because of it. I, I, I don't care about the. I don't mean like the injuries. I mean, show me something that he's doing that that makes you think. Right, we're on the right track here. We need to keep him. I don't see anything. I think he's integrated young talent really well into the team. What well, don't other managers all do? I no, think... I don't think so. I don't think so. Not the way that Eric yeah. Ten has. Who, who are we on about? Talking about Kobe Meenu, talking about think... Alejandro Ganacho, talking about Rasmus Hoyland. You know, there's... He paid big money. <laughs> Rasmus Hoyland, he paid big money for him. Yeah. I, I just think... You're clutching at straws. Think... Kobe like Meenu's an obvious talent. Yeah. Um, I didn't know who he was until I saw him on a tour in America. I'd never even heard of him. And I thought, as soon as I, I didn't know who he was, I'd never heard of him. I don't watch the youth and the, yeah. and the reserves and all that. And I'm sat in the stand in the USA watching a game and I'm thinking, wow, who's this kid? He's brilliant. First time I saw him play. So, so why does the manager yeah. need any, All right, the manager needs the credit. He's got the power to play him. But okay. if I'd seen him play, I would have played him. Okay. <laughs> I, I, under, I, under, I understand that, but you're talking about people think it's so black and white to change the manager. If changing the manager is going to do something, why has it not worked the last six times we've done it? Do you know what I mean? Like, the, the, the think, behind the scenes, there's, there's so much that goes on that, that gets there. taken into... That gets that nobody kind of looks at and people just always want to put the blame on the manager, blame on the manager, blame on the manager. Ten Hag has got a lot of stuff wrong. I'll admit that. I'm not 100% sold on him, do not get me wrong, but... The, the situation we're in, we're going under another rebuild now. Ineos have come in. We're getting rid of people left, right and centre. I think the last thing we need to do is get another manager in, take another risk and, and start the whole thing again. Is Eric it not, Ten Hag, is it not wait, just let me finish. Him? Is let it me, not a risk to finish. keep him as well? Let me finish, yeah, I will say that. But Eric Ten Hag knows the squad inside out now. He knows, I think... Not who, that good he doesn't. He's only just fallen on a three-man midfield in the last three weeks. Oh, Ricky, but I'm saying he knows, <laughs> he knows the profiles, he knows the attitudes, he'll know who's performing in training, he knows who's good enough and who's not. People might disagree and agree. You get a new manager in, he'll want to look at every single player again, he'll want to talk to every single player again. We're not getting rid so of anyone So these summer. are not reasons to defend uh, Ten Hag, All the Ten Hag's... That's about the new manager that you're talking. No, yeah, it is reasons to defend Ten Hag because he's got his foot in the door now and he's got a handle on the squad. And he knows well, what needs to happen him, going forward. Right. If you keep, if they do I'm keep not saying him. it's going to be successful, but I'm saying at least give him the last year and just assess it, assess the situation. You could at least get that roof fixed, couldn't you, bloody hell? <laughs> <laughs> I'd rather get that roof fixed before I change the manager. That is terrible. I, I don't know if that's a decision. I don't know that's a thing. I don't know if that's a large decision, to be honest. That shows the state we're in, do you know what I mean? And people just think, oh, we'll, we'll, get in, we'll get in whoever the manager is and that's going to, suddenly we're going to be competing again. It's and stupidity and to actually think that, and I think. And that's the thing, like, there's, there's a common denominator in every single one of these managers that we've had and it's, the, the common denominator was always the ownership and the culture of the club. Once that, now that that's kind of changing, at least we've seen new, kind of new ownership, we've still got Glazers, but a bit of, of, of a new ownership, we've seen a bit more change. Now let's see how, we, how it progresses. But if we just keep the, the common, if we try and... Um, make that same decision as to, OK, it's the manager's problem, let's get rid of him, or oh, this player's not playing well, let's get rid of him, this player's not doing this, this manager, and it's like, we get rid of the same problem, even though the common denominator is still there every single time. So why don't we just actually try something different? My whole thing is, end of the day, we've been through 11 years of just pain. We've <laughs> been through 11 years of the same problem over and over again. I'm OK with, with risk, with, I call it a risk, with having this extra year, potentially, of Ten Hag, Possibly failing, you can call it a failure. Yeah, you know, there's a chance that does happen. There's a chance that could happen, but it's been 11 years now of, of the same thing over and over again. Let's take this next year and say, you know, yeah, we've got rid of the common denominator and we've, we've got this new ownership that's, that's obviously trying to make changes. Let's keep Ten Hag and let's see what he can do in this final year. If he messes up, like I say this all the time, he messes up, get rid of him. Who cares? But let's, let's try something different. Think about what Pep always says about 
the structure behind him and yeah. how crucial that has been. Like, yeah. this is one of the best managers that's ever been, by the way, and he's talking about how crucial the structure is behind him. And, oh, I understand, like, you know, Pep is also massive, massively credit yeah. for what's happened at City. But <coughs> I genuinely think you could put any manager into Manchester United in the struggle, I even think, Pep. I think that's the problem you've got. I think every manager comes in. But I think he, I think he has too much power as well. I think that's the problem. Mm. I think I the players that. he's brought in, some of them are really questionable. And mm -hmm. I think, as you said, it's the whole structure, the whole like stuff behind the scenes. I think it's pretty terrible at United, and it needs to change if you want to. And I suppose it is changing a bit behind the scenes. But I think you're right. I think most managers would struggle, but I still think Ten Hag is particularly, particularly poor. I think. Well, we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. I mean, let's do a quick fire now. Do we think Ten Hag will still be Man United manager after the FA Cup final? Ricky? I would say probably not, no. Mods? Do I think he will be? Like, yeah, do you think he will be? Not if you want him to be, do you think I he will? I think he will be. Yeah, probably. I think he will be. I think sadly he's gone. I think we'll beat you, I reckon, and then I think he'll go. I, I want him to stay, but I think he's gone, to be honest. That's, what, that's my inclination. But I, I want him to stay. I also think they've made the decision already, to be honest with you. Yeah. Do, you do, you remember, do you remember last season when we used to sit here after all the games doing the, uh, the fans forum? Do you remember time, that a little time bit? Time after yes. time after time, we said, we're so lucky, we're not going to, you know, we, we, we can't keep this up, nicking these games. And we ended up finishing third. And I can't remember us saying it word for word, but I bet you there's footage out there somewhere, certainly of me and maybe one or two of the others, saying, you know, if we keep going like this, we won't finish in the top four next year. So last year, we didn't say word for word, but we more or less predicted what was going to yeah. happen this year because of how we were playing last year. You know, a lot of people just forget. It's, well, they always say it's a results-based yeah. business. We won the League Cup, we finished third in the league, and I think people were happy with what happened. And if you'd have offered me that before the ball was kicked that season, I probably would have, because that's where we are these days, before you laugh. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> I, I was, you know, I was... Um, I would have took that a League Cup win and a third place finish, but I wouldn't have expected us to get it playing like we did, and we didn't deserve to get it playing like we did, but we did get it, and people are so so results based in their thinking, and it is a results based business. But we were saying all the time, it's not good. This it isn't I good. Do... It wasn't good last year. <laughs> you know the I mean? one thing I would say is we definitely played better <laughs> football last year. I'm not saying it was perfect, and it, you know there was obviously some. There were some bad times last year, like there were. I'd like us to have scored a few more goals. We scored 57 last year and 57 this year. Yeah, this year for me <laughs> felt torturous at some points, genuinely. Like the football was absolutely abysmal. Like this last, year, last year. This, this year. year. Oh, this, year. this year was genuinely like, it was like, it was like torture putting the TV on to, to watch it or even going to the games like we do every week. Like it genuinely was. But last year, yeah, okay, you, I thought we could see some foundations to build off. Like it wasn't perfect, and we weren't always playing amazing football. But you could see kind of so you could see where it was going. Whereas this year, it's it's, it's been it's been really tough. I but, can't I can't relate to be honest. Oh shut sure. <laughs> up. Do you know what? Do you know what? This brings me on to my next point. How long are you been a city fan? Uh, my whole life, mate. How don't, old are you? Don't, I'm twenty. Oh, sorry. Don't, don't, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this 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 part this brings me on to the point, and I'm going to bring it up. One one five. Yeah. We've all seen the uh, yeah. NBA picture oh, yeah. of, uh, <laughs> of uh, what was it? Of, <laughs> of that one of, of, of Pep. But Pep Guardiola rumours that he could be um, he could be evacuating Manchester City yeah. just at the same point as where they're due to have a verdict well, I tell you on what, these charges. I tell you what, one one five. He's been annoying. Dock us thirty points now because we'd still be ahead of you in the league. So <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah, but what do you um, think about that? Like, if Pep leaves, do you think and, and you potentially get charged? Is that like? Is that Man City going to be on a little bit of a downward no, spiral? Like, no, I, how important is Pep to the City, think, City system? At the end of the day, I listened to the um, the chairman's interview last year, Cal Doon, and he said that uh, he can't speak too much about the charges obviously because of legal matters, but he said he can't wait to give uh, the irrefutable evidence that we have to, to the uh, to the court. Irrefutable evidence? What, what do you mean? You mean, you mean the what, what, the say, <laughs> say what you want. <laughs> we can't we can't win because if we if we lose all the obviously if we get found guilty of all the charges then obviously we've lost out on that way, and if we get found not guilty then everyone's going to say we've paid them off yeah, anyway, you, so. well, yeah, you probably just saying, sit back and take the, the trophies the, the, the evidence is you paying a load of lawyers who can find loopholes to get out of it because if you actually look allegedly allegedly yeah. i don't want the letter mark received <laughs> <laughs> allegedly, <laughs> allegedly like if you genuinely look through like the main ones that they're investigating which i actually did the other day 
because sometimes you know people say one one five and you think oh yeah we're having a laugh or whatever but if you actually look into it like the it genuinely does look incredible. like very very credible that yeah. they have been breached and and even as a city fan you've got to admit well, that. I, I, I can't admit Come it because because you look at you look at the um the auditing the auditing that they do on these these clubs and Deloitte are one of the biggest accountancy firms in, in the in the world, and you're basically saying that they have committed fraud and basically lied. And I'm not saying that. I'm well, saying no, that. that's what if if the charge were found guilty, at some point along that line, they have committed some sort of fraud, and <coughs> that's what you're saying. You know, it's it's not just oh, I've city cheated or spent money like the Everton and the Forest cases. It's like a mass fraud case. It's saying that City have not only overspent, but we've also lied in order to do that and cover it up. Mm. Yeah. And we've paid off. Hundreds of people and different, and everyone's kept that under wraps. I don't, I don't see, it, I don't see it. But it's I think that's to, very possible. No, I mean, the, the government does it all the time. City, well, City, Man City, did City didn't have any money, and they were in the third division not too long ago. <laughs> Why is that such a I mean, is it not obvious? But, 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 but there was no financial fair play in 2008, and yeah. that only came in I think 2011, 2012. Mm -hmm. So we had four seasons to go mental spending, mm. and then. Like if you opened a shop now mm. and you, you were invested in that business and then all of a sudden after four years somebody says, by the way, now you're only allowed to spend what you earn and you're only selling a few sweets. Like mm. your whole business plan relies on spending that, invest, investing mm. that money that you were going to invest. So That's a fair show. I think it's difficult when you come in and you've got a project on the table, whether these charges are true or they're not true, I think it's difficult to come out and say, these owners have done that, they've done that, because they've got a business plan, they've got this big project, and obviously the project's coming off now, as you can see, evidenced by the trophies, uh, all, all the games and stuff are winning, the, the manager, the players we've got, the youth set up, all that stuff, all the investment around the ground, it's difficult to say that project's cheating or whatever, because when they took over, they didn't even know financial fair play was going to be a thing, and it was only brought in by the big clubs to try and stop teams like City and Newcastle actually spending and investing and becoming one of those elite teams. So, so, so why did it take six years for you to re, like, um, construct your business then? What do you, what do you mean? Because you said it, financial fair play came in 2011, 2012, yeah. but the, the, the accusations or the yeah. charges are till 2018. Um, well, I, I don't, I don't, I don't really know anything about it. I don't know that. Much. None of us are accountants here. Are we? <laughs> yeah, but I mean, you can, well, you can so make the argument from 2008 yeah. to 2012, but then yeah. you've got another six years, another, another four well, yeah, years. Yeah, but it's a knock-on effect, isn't it? If, if we're investing in players in 2010 and we're paying them big wages, they're, they're still going to be on the on the books all those years and in, into the future, aren't they? So, I suppose it's just a question of we'll see what happens in, in court. And, uh, I don't want to speak too highly on it, but the evidence that I've personally seen does seem quite damning. It's like the sponsorship deals, everything surrounding that. Like you can't say is like having seen that information that you don't even slightly believe that yourself. I know you're a safe fan. But, but the, the, the way I see it is I want to see all the information. I, I, fair enough, there'll be a little bit of a, a weird Twitter account, all these things people mention, but that's just such a small amount of all the data. I want to see everything. And that's what the courtroom's going to see. They're going to see everything. And they're going to, there might be eight charges or 30 charges or whatever that get proven guilty. But I think until you can see everything and you're qualified to do so, I don't, I don't see how people can just straight away say you're guilty or you're not guilty. Because it might look dodgy, but you've just got to wait and see, haven't you? That's, that's the yeah, way I see it. I think, look, if I got accused of cheating 115 times, I definitely did it once. <laughs> At least one <laughs> time. On. 115 times. Yeah, even once is a bit of a stretch. You've done at least 50% of, of, those, of those charges. And for me, yeah, and this is why, like, I don't know how much time I've got left in here, but this is why, like, for, for me, like, as a City fan, I don't sound like you can be so, like, confident in your club and happy with your club, knowing that you've built your success over something that other clubs have not been allowed to do. Look, Mods, I'll tell you one thing. Do you know, <laughs> do you know that United beating Brighton on the last day of the season has more views on YouTube than them lifting the four times I mean, in a row? I mean, I, no, uh, th this is part of... <laughs> couldn't, couldn't care less. Is this what, is, in the words of Ollie, I think he said it in 2013, couldn't care less, because at the end of the day... I, I've not even heard I, about City winning I this really, I, well, Everyone says, you know, don't care about City, don't talk about City. No one Every, does, We're though. all talking about them now. And pain, at the end of the day, I, <laughs> I'm a fan, right? I'm a fan. Do you really think I care at all about whether someone thinks we're important, someone thinks we're big? We've won four Premier Leagues in a row. No one's ever done that. We won the treble last season. If we beat you in the FA Cup final, we're the first team ever to win the double-double, which is obviously Prem and FA Cup back-to-back -back seasons. No one's ever done that before. Obviously, on top of that, we won the Champions League as well last season. So I couldn't care less. I couldn't care less. I'm going away with mates, watching City dominate in Europe, 
all over England. I've not missed, I've, the last three years I've been at uni, I've been to every league game, all 38, all three seasons, and I'm absolutely loving it. So I just, I couldn't care less. Well, you're here. I'm here. I'm here, I'm here <laughs> so now. You've actually got to go to United Stand. Yeah, I'm, I'm here in the United Stand because <laughs> we're playing in the FA Cup final. We're lucky enough to be in the FA Cup final twice in a row. And I'm here, I'm here to chat about City. That's, that's how big we are because everyone wants to talk about us. That's why I'm here. Uh, that's why I'm oh, on there. The mighty man, the man United States. You stand, can't say so. you're big, though. Come on. Oh, no, but no, no, it's the City, right? I'm, four, I'm four, four, four in a row. I'll, I'll sit here and admit you're a see. much better team than us. And I am jealous of the fact that you've got to travel your age because yeah, like, we're similar so ages. Good. Go and watch your team yeah. win everything. I'm jealous of that. But you can't say that you're a big team because you just. I mean, can't. you've got to admit I, that. If I, if I, I happen to admit that. Of course, we're a big team. We got, I mean, you're saying about Instagram. Instagram and this, other than other than Instagram. United. I'm not talking about Instagram. What, what are you talk talking about? YouTube a minute ago. Talking, talking about? Yeah, Klopp's farewell got like seventy percent more viewers. Nah, than it's your nonsense. If you look at the actual it's in true. game, no, no. If, if you're a Wolves fan now, you're interested in whether City win the league, but you're not going to wait forty minutes after the game ends to see City lift the title. Why would you care? The, the majority of viewers, I think, sixty four percent of viewers were watching the actual game. As soon as that ends, why would you listen and wait around when there's Klopp on the other side that might actually interest you? Do you know what I mean? It's that, that is such a strange, strange thing to bring up, and it is, it's clutching at straws, to be honest. It's actually, no, I, I think it's, I it's think, embarrassing. I've, I've, I've it's got not a clutching few. at straws to say that, that United's last game of the season, when we've had a terrible, terrible season, has more views than your winning game of the season to lift, lift the four in a row. I like, mean, that's not clutching at straws. That's just, is that, is that that's even just true data. Or that's I, just data. It's true. I, I, think, cool. I think, yeah, because I've got a few City fans, and, and they message me every single day, or every single time United play anyway. Um, about if you lose or whatever, and my whole, I think that City fans, your whole like goal in life yeah. as a City fan is to just be better than United. That that's pretty we're, much. We're that's pretty already much, better that, than That's United pretty much. That, that's pretty that's big, bigger or better, however you want to call it. That's pretty much all City fans have ever wanted to do. Because every single thing that you mentioned, the reason why you mentioned it is because United, well, United did something which made you want you, to come you, and do better than that. If you think about, if you think about the context of it though, as you said, when we're in the third tier, you won the treble, so you've got to see the whole backstory. We were this team that was. Easily second best in Manchester. Terrible team. We're in the third tier. We barely get promoted out of the third tier. United are winning every trophy. When I was th this big, United are winning everything. I'm getting the piss ripped out of me at school. Everything is, is about Rose United Rose winning. The trouble. And now, and now it's gone. No, in 99, I, of course I wasn't born. But what I'm saying is when, when it was like 07, 08, United are winning the Champions League, they're winning the Premier League. They keep winning, they keep winning. Then I get to the end of primary school and City win... <laughs> the Premier League in the last minute against United. So it's the context of it. It's United laughing at City, mocking City, and then now we're in this position where City are doing the complete opposite to United. United are now finishing mid-table. They're having a nightmare, and City are winning can everything. I just so say, can I just say the one difference is that one team did it legitimately? Well, as I said, I'll say it again. Just deduct us <laughs> 30 points and we'll still be ahead. You've got to think that is mental to no, think. No, it is. You are, that you is are. mental to think that Man United are 31 points, seven places beneath City. It's we, we mad, are isn't it? absolute years away from the level that you are. And that's why going into, we'll do our final predictions, going into this cup final, like, it is... Every United fan will admit it's a massively, massively tough ass. Like once, the thing is about City, there's such a machine that once you go like 2-0 down, it's sort of game over. Like You can kill us off very, very quickly. But we're getting towards the end of the show. Everyone get in the comments down below your score predictions, any thoughts. I'll be very interested to read through them. <laughs> but score predictions for the game and just predictions in general. Ricky, we'll start with you. I'll go 2-1 again for City. Oh, come on, Ricky. Oh, cheers, mate. Well, do you want me to that. predict? I'm only, do you want to predict with my heart or with my head? <laughs> Your heart. If you want me to predict with my heart, I'll say 5 0 for United. <laughs> 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 Five over the top, and is it? <laughs> Five screamers. Um, uh, I think. Can I just say one thing that's actually oh. quite mad? Like, oh. I would generally like bet on the fact there's probably like a not. Point not 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 one percent that United could win that game five 0 but there's probably like a seventy percent chance City could win that game. <laughs> exactly five what we were saying. That's I, sad, that I, have, I haven't looked this time. I remember looking last time for the game, the three one game of the Etihad, and City to win. I think it was six or seven nil was actually better odds. Sorry, lower odds than United to win one or two nil. It was it's mm. mental, really, isn't it? Mm. Mental. That is good to know. Um, <laughs> was that this season at the that Etihad? That was this season at the Etihad. Yeah. My prediction. Uh, I mean, I always think I always think we're going to concede, so I'm not going to say anything. No, I'm going to say I'm going to give you a, a nice two-one United, a nice two-one United. 
Nice. Hanging the game. That's a good one, one for them for most mate. of the game, and then maybe late, late, very, very late, we will get a goal. Well, as I said, it's a cup game, but I'm going to predict, like I always do, and I'm going to say 5 1 to City. No. Because, Not because, here, here's, here's the explanation the one is going to be a penalty, that's given, or either offside, handball, goal, ten hug, or screamer. One in, or whatever, or screamer. Yeah. There'll be some sort of madness that happens for United to score. Um, but it'll be 5 1 because we've not got, obviously, not got a Champions League final of the week after this year. Last year, we had to sort of wait back and not quite send it for the humiliation because we had to play in Istanbul the week after. But this year, it's the last game of the season. We might as well go for a big blowout and just smash you 5 5 1. That's what I'm going to say. Oh, but, oh, please, you say this every time. Please win. I can't stand you being like that. And then if it does happen, <laughs> though, if this does happen, we're clipped up all over social media on his Twitter account. If we win, can we bring him back? Yeah, you said got, this last got, time. You said I said I'll come back regardless of the result, and you said you said no. So oh, you said no. No, you can ring, you can ring in. You can ring I'll ring in. in. I ring in if we win. Then yeah. yeah. You Are you going to Wembley? Yeah, of course. I'll see you there. Of course. But I'm going with two-one United as well. Sack it. Put it in a win. Who cares? In fact, no, three 0 United. <laughs> 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 do you want to say four more scores? You want to cover all bases there. <laughs> we'll do a Luckman, yeah. We'll do three goals. Two one. It's, it's, it's happened recently. Uh, do you reckon yeah, you have, the, do you reckon you have them that. bucket hats again on there? Because last year they were embarrassing. Yeah, I looked at it. It was just like you call oh, those, those embarrassing. Hats. Those hats. You, you're you're like. the fan base that invented the Posman or whatever They're, it is. Or nah, that was not, Lech not, Posman. Not, not yeah. invented the Posman, yeah, yeah. but you know what I mean. Copied uses, the Posman. Copy, yeah, yeah, copied the Posman. It's good the Posman. You must Come hate on. it. See you tradition, must hate it. Tradition Imagine tradition. seeing that. You've all got your red bucket hats on that are all too big for you because they did one size. Everyone's got them on. You look like... I don't even, I don't even think I can say what you look like on it. <laughs> but you look <laughs> stupid, we'll say that. And then 13 seconds in, Gundo scores and we're all doing the pause and Look at that. That's amazing, that, isn't it? Yep. Don't, don't, don't feel, don't feel much about it. Yeah. Hollow, hollow club. Anyway. Yeah, anyway, anyway, guys, that's our predictions. You get in your predictions down below. Luke's made me like ten times more ramped up for the game now, and I'm just, <laughs> you know what? Put your faith in United if, if if you can even do that after this season. But Ricky, look, see you at Wembley. I'll be there, darling. Maud, you'll be on the fan forum, won't you? Yeah, yeah. And Luke. I'll be there. Well, you'll be hopefully ringing back in with your city tears. But yeah, we'll see it. Anyway, thank you everyone for watching. We'll see you on the next one. Get on all your comments down below and come on United.